We're going to move from arithmetic sequences to geometric sequences, and the difference between the two is that all geometric sequences have what's known as a common ratio from term to term, or a common multiple. So once again, since we're talking about this being a ratio, we take a term and the term before it, like 54 and 18, and make a ratio out of that. And that should be the same in ratio to 162 over 54. And if that's the case, we know that to be geometric. So in each of these cases, we know we have a ratio of 3. Likewise, you'll see this example below. We have 10 to 5, 20 to 10, 40 to 20, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this has a common ratio of 2. Like the arithmetic, we're going to take and find an explicit formula for the specific geometric sequence. I get from my first term to my second term by looking at, well, what's my ratio? Ratio in this case is 2. So if I take my first term and multiply it by my ratio of 2, I'll get to this next term. Now, to get to the term after that, I multiply by 2 again. So I have 2 times 2. Or another way to say that is start at my first term and take 2 squared. Then I multiply by 2 again, so 2 times 2 times 2, which is like going from my first term, taking my ratio and cubing. Then I go multiply by 2 again, and I get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is going from my first term, using my ratio to the fourth power, etc., etc. You'll notice the common terms in, in each of these expressions here is my first term and my ratio of 2. And we again take a look at our subscript versus what's changing. So in this case we have a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and I'm looking for whatever value I have here in this power. So I look at my subscript of 2 and a power of 1, a subscript of 3 and a power of 2, a subscript of 4 and a power of 3, and a subscript of 5 and a power of 4. So if I have a subscript of n, you'll notice each of these powers is one less than the subscript. So I have an n minus 1 on my power here. And that will get me to my nth term. In general, you'll notice this is the first term, the ratio, and the subscript minus 1. So overall, if I want the general explicit equation for a geometric sequence, I take whatever my nth term is, is going to be equal to my first term times its ratio to that n minus 1 power. And again, nth term is whatever term you're looking for. First term, say sub 1, common ratio is just that ratio from term to term, and n represents the number of terms. So let's use that formula to generate a couple of values. I know I have a third term of 96, a ratio of 4, and I want to find my 20th term. A couple of ways to go ahead and do that. I know the third term is equal to the first term times the ratio to the 3 minus 1. So, given that I know my third term is 96, I could find my first term, given that I have a ratio of 4, and the power is 2. So this would be 96 equals 16 times the first term, divide, and I get 6 equals to my first term. Therefore, I can use that to find my 20th term. So, the 20th term will equal my first term times the ratio to the 20 minus 1 power. In other words, the 20th term equals that first term which we just found of 6 times my ratio of 4 to the 19th power. These are going to get rather large. And in this case, the 20th term 
would be equivalent to, this is approximately, 1.65 times 10 to the 12th power. Next, we want to write a general explicit formula for the following sequence. And we know all we have to do in this case is take the first term, which is 160, times the ratio. I can look real quick here, go from 80 to 160, 40 to 80. Just find that ratio, which we know to be a half in this case. And raise that to the n minus 1 power, and there's my explicit formula for the nth term. We've got the first term, we've got the fourth term, we want to find the tenth term. Again, we could use that fourth term in conjunction with the first term to find my ratio, knowing that. I have the ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. Plugging everything in, we know we have 20 is equal to 2 times the ratio to the third power. Therefore, I have 10 is equal to r cubed. And the cubed root of 10 is equal to r. Therefore, if I want to find my tenth term, I need my first term which we know to be 2 times my ratio, which is the cube root of 10, raised to the 10 minus 1 power. I know 2, the cube root can be written as 10 to the 1 third power, but that is going to be raised to the ninth power. And whenever I have a power raised to a power, I multiply power, so this is the same as 2 times 10 to the third power, which we know is 2,000. So in all of these sequences, we're just using a formula to generate specific terms that we need. And it's just a case of making sure you know that formula so you can use it in all the applications. That's all we've got. Fill out your lesson summary and do your mind math lab and we'll chat more tomorrow.